Hello students, let us start with the part 2 of the first unit. In this part, we will study about cirisometer and shantometer, analog multimeter, digital multimeter and effects of loading. What is ohmmeter? Ohmmeter is an instrument used to measure the unknown value of the resistance. We know that unit of the resistance is ohm, hence the name ohmmeter. There are two types of ohmmeters. First one is known as series ohmmeter and the second one is the shant ohmmeter. Let us try to learn about the first type of ohmmeter that is series ohmmeter. Series ohmmeter consists of a PMMC galvanometer which is connected in parallel with a variable resistor R2 which is known as zero adjust resistor. This parallel combination of PMMC galvanometer and R2 are connected in series with R1 resistor and internal battery source E. R1 resistor is known as current limiting resistor. This series ohmmeter is connected with the unknown resistance Rx across terminals A and B. The current through PMMC galvanometer depends on the magnitude of the unknown resistance Rx connected across terminals A and B. This is a scale for a series ohmmeter. Scale of series ohmmeter is inverted. That means indications 0 ohm is at the right hand side of the scale and indication infinity is on the left hand side of the scale. Series ohmmeter is mostly used for measuring medium and high values of resistance. Now let us see how the scale of series ohmmeter is calibrated. Firstly, what is the meaning of calibration? Calibration is the process of configuring an instrument to provide a value within an acceptable range. These values can be used as reference standards to find the unknown values. In the case of series ohmmeter, when the resistance Rx is equal to 0 ohm, that is when the unknown resistance Rx connected between A and B is 0 ohms, these terminals A and B are short circuited. Thus, the current supplied by the internal battery source E will be divided between the PMMC meter and R2 resistor. If R2 resistor is varied such that the current through the meter is full scale deflection current, then the meter will show the full scale deflection. This full scale deflection position can be represented as R is equal to 0 ohm. This is because when resistance Rx is equal to 0, the current through the meter is the full scale deflection current. Similarly, when the unknown resistance or Rx is very high, that is when Rx is equal to infinity, terminals A and B will be open circuited. Since the circuit is open or not complete, the internal battery source E will not provide any current through this circuit. Hence, the current through the PMMC instrument will be zero. This will be represented as null deflection current on the meter. This null deflection position on the meter can be marked as infinity corresponding to the unknown value Rx. Thus, the scale of the series ohmmeter is inverted. That is, 0 ohm is marked or represented on the right hand side and infinity is represented on the left hand side of the scale. Similarly, we can find the intermediate values or markings on the scale by simply connecting the known values of resistance Rx to the instrument. Now let us see what is the use of R2 resistor or what is the disadvantage of series ohmmeter. The disadvantage of series ohmmeter is that the voltage of the internal battery source E decreases gradually with time. This causes full scale deflection current to drop and meter does not read 0 ohm when A and B are shorted. To avoid this limitation, variable shunt resistor R2 is used such that it is varied to counter the effects of the changes in the battery source E. Let us try to learn about the second type of ohm meter that is the shunt ohm meter. Shunt ohmmeter consists of an internal battery source E connected in series with the switch S and the variable resistor R1. This series arrangement is connected in parallel with the PMMC galvanometer and the unknown resistor Rx whose value has to be measured is connected across the terminals A and B. Here the R1 resistor is called as zero adjust resistor and the on off switch is used to disconnect the battery from the circuit when instrument is not in use. Current through the PMMC galvanometer depends on the magnitude of the unknown resistor Rx. 
This is a scale of a shunt resistor with indication 0 ohm on left hand side of the scale and indication infinity on the right hand side of the scale. Shunt ohmmeter is useful for measuring low values of the resistances. Now let us see how the scale of the shunt ohmmeter is calibrated. Close the switch S when the circuit is in use. If the resistance Rx is equal to 0 ohm, then the terminals A and B will be short circuited. Thus, the entire current I1 which is supplied by the internal battery source E will now flow only through the short circuited path. This is because the short circuited path has the least resistance as compared to the internal resistance of the coil Rm. Hence, no current will flow through the PMMC galvanometer. This is represented as null deflection on the meter. This null deflection position can be marked as 0 ohm corresponding to the resistance Rx on the scale. Similarly, when Rx is very large, that is when Rx is equal to infinity, terminals A and B are open circuited and no current flows through these terminals A and B. Hence, the entire current I1 which is supplied by the internal battery source E flows only through the PMMC galvanometer. Vary the value of resistor R1 such that the PMMC galvanometer shows full scale deflection current. This full scale deflection position of PMMC galvanometer can be represented as infinity on the scale as the corresponding value of resistance Rx. Thus, the shunt ohmmeter has the scale such that 0 ohm is indicated on the left hand side of the scale and infinity is represented on the right hand side of the scale. Similarly, we can find the intermediate markings on the scale by simply connecting different known values of Rx to the instrument. The series and the shunt ohmmeters learnt in the previous slides do not provide a very wide range of measurements. Thus, to extend the ranges up to a very high values of resistances, multi-range ohmmeters are used. This is a circuit diagram of a multi-range ohmmeter. Here, you have to select the position of the required range using this range switch. For example, to measure the resistance below 10 ohm, you have to set the range switch at the position 10 ohm. An adjuster or zero adjust variable resistor is provided to adjust the initial reading to zero. The unknown resistance whose value has to be measured is connected in parallel with the meter at these terminals. Magnitude of the resistance is determined through the deflection of the pointer. Now let us try to understand loading effect in voltmeter. Ideally, the resistance of the voltmeter is infinite so that the voltmeter does not alter any circuit parameters. Thus, the sensitivity of the voltmeter which is directly proportional to the resistance of the voltmeter is a very important factor when the meter is selected for certain voltage measurement. A low sensitivity meter, that is, the voltmeter having lower resistance may give a correct reading when connected in a low resistive circuit. But the same voltmeter having the lower sensitivity when connected in a highly resistive circuit may produce error or unreliable reading that is the lower reading is produced than the actual voltage drop which existed before the meter was connected. This effect is called loading effect of the voltmeter and is mainly caused by the lower sensitivity instruments. Now let us try to learn about the loading effect with an example. Consider circuit in figure 1. In this circuit there are two resistors resistor R1 which is equal to 100 kilo ohm and resistor R2 which is equal to 50 kilo ohm. The supply voltage is equal to 150 volt. It is desired to measure the voltage across R2 resistor using two voltmeters A and B. This voltmeter is connected across the R2 resistor and the voltmeter A is having the sensitivity equal to 1000 ohms per volt and voltmeter B has a sensitivity of 20,000 ohm per volt. Theoretically, we can find the voltage drop across the resistor R2 using the voltage divider rule. Applying this rule, voltage drop across the R2 resistor that is V2 is given as V2 is equal to R2 into V upon R1 plus R2. In this case, R2 is the resistance across which the voltage has to be calculated. V is the supply voltage and R1 plus R2 is the total resistance connected in parallel with the supply voltage. Now, 
substitute the values for V, R1 and R2 in this equation. V is equal to 150 volts, R1 is equal to 100 kilo ohm and R2 is equal to 50 kilo ohm. Thus, V2 will be equal to 50 volts. This is the true value or actual voltage drop across the resistor R2 before connecting any voltmeter across it. Now, consider case 1 wherein we are using voltmeter A to measure the voltage drop across the resistor R2. This voltmeter A has a range from 0 to 50 volts that is it can measure voltages from 0 to 50 volts. It has a sensitivity of 1000 ohm per volt. This sensitivity is very low when compared to the resistor R2 which is equal to 50,000 ohms or 50 kilo ohms. This voltmeter A has its own resistance which is given by equation Rn is equal to sensitivity into range voltage. Substitute the values of sensitivity and range voltage as sensitivity equal to 1000 ohm per volt and range voltage is equal to 50 volts. Thus, we get the resistance of the voltmeter Rm is equal to 50 kilo ohm. Now, to, before finding the voltage drop across this parallel branch, we have to calculate the equivalent resistance in this parallel branch. That will be given as R equivalent is equal to R2 into Rm upon R2 plus Rm. That is the parallel combination of R2 and Rm. Substitute the values of R2 and Rm as 50 kilo ohm each. Thus, we get R equivalent is equal to 25 kilo ohms. Now, find the voltage drop across this parallel branch using the voltage divider rule by using equation V2 is equal to R equivalent across which the voltage has to be calculated into the supply voltage V divided by R1 plus R equivalent. Substitute the values and we get V2 is equal to 30 volts. That is the voltage across the R2 resistor as 30 volts. This is an unreliable reading or it is an error because voltmeter A reads much less value than actual value or the true value. That is it reads only 30 volts instead of 50 volts. This is happening because of the effect known as the loading effect. Loading effect happens due to the low sensitivity of the meter. Because of low sensitivity, in this case, R2 is equal to Rm. Now consider case 2 wherein we are using voltmeter B to find the value of the voltage drop across the resistor R2. Even this voltmeter has a range from 0 to 50 volts. But sensitivity is very high which is equal to 20,000 ohm per volt. Now again calculate Rm that is res resistance of the voltmeter and we get Rm is equal to 1000 kilo ohm. Now find the equivalent resistance that is the resistance of this parallel branch across which the voltage has to be calculated. This will be the parallel combination of R2 and Rm which is equal to 47.62 kilo ohm. Now find the voltage across this parallel branch using vol voltage divider rule. Thus we get V2 is equal to 48.39 volts. This reading is very close to the true reading. We are getting the correct reading because the loading effect is not prominent in this case and the meter has a very high sensitivity. Thus we have seen that low sensitivity voltmeter that is voltmeter with a lower resistance gives unreliable or incorrect readings when connected in a highly resistive circuit that is meter produces lower reading than the actual voltage drop that existed before the meter was connected this effect is called as loading effect of an instrument and it's mainly caused due to low sensitivity instruments due to the lower sensitivity of the voltmeter that is due to lower voltmeter resistance rm Total equivalent resistance of that part of circuit where the voltmeter is connected reduces significantly. This results in the voltage drop across the resistor which is under measurement and causes the loading effect. Ideally, a perfect meter would have no loading effect but all meters have some loading effects on the circuit they are measuring. For the lower resistive circuits, loading effect is less but for higher resistive circuit, you have to use highly sensitive voltmeter to prevent the loading effect. What is a multimeter? Multi means two or more, meter meaning measuring instrument. Thus, a multimeter is an electronic measuring instrument that can measure multiple electrical quantities using a single instrument. A multimeter is a device which is used to measure various electrical functions such as voltage, current, resistance, to test the continuity, 
to measure the electrical frequency. There are two types of multimeters. The first one is called as analog multimeter and the second one is digital multimeter. Now let us learn about the first type of multimeter that is analog multimeter. An analog multimeter is a multifunctional meter that can measure two or more electrical properties by connecting the test slits to the circuit, device or component under test. Analog multimeter uses PMMC instrument to move the pointer over a printed scale which is calibrated to display different types of measurements. Most of the analog multimeters have several calibrated scales for the single meter movement. For example, the analog multimeter shown in the figure 3 has 5 different scales. These scales are used for the resistance measurement, for the measurement of AC quantities, for measurement of DC quantities, the dB scale and the scale for checking the battery voltage. Analog multimeters are also known as AV ohmmeter or amp volt ohmmeter. Various parts of analog multimeter are as shown in figure number 3. An analog multimeter consists of a pointer with the calibrated scales, a function switch or the range switch and the indications on the front panel such as DC voltage, DC current, AC voltage, AC current and the ranges for the resistance measurement. The function switch is used to either turn off the multimeter or to select the type of the measurement or the function that has to be done. That is, we can select various functions such as AC voltage, battery check, DC current, DC voltage or resistance measurement based on the type of the application that is required to be performed using analog multimeter. The function switch or the range switch is used to select the appropriate range. By selecting the range, always use the highest range first and then decrease the range until a substantial deflection is obtained on the meter. Analog multimeter has three input checks, namely DC 10 ampere check, volt ohm ampere check and the common check. The negative terminal is always connected to the common check. Test slits are placed depending upon the position of the function switch in either of these two input checks. That is, the red color terminal or red probe is always connected either to DC 10 ampere jack or volt ohm DC milliampere jack. But the negative terminal is always connected to the common terminal. Now let us learn about the scales used in the analog multimeter. Analog multimeter is also known as left zero type of instrument. That is, the scale begins with the zero from the extreme left position. And before doing any measurements, needle or the pointer will rest at this extreme left position. Calibrated scales correspond to different function switch positions or different range switch positions. There are two types of scales used in analog multimeter. The first scale is known as linear scale and the second one is known as non-linear scale. Linear scale is a scale that is divided into equally spaced segments. Non-linear scale is a scale that is divided into unequally spaced segments. Generally, the voltage and the ampere scales used in the analog multimeters are linear in nature, whereas the resistance or the ohmic scales are non-linear scales. Since these multimeters can have three or more scales, thus when using an analog multimeter, the correct scale must be used to obtain either a voltage, current or ohmic reading. That is, while doing voltage measurements, voltage scale should not be confused with the ohmic scale. The measured value of the quantity is indicated by the pointer on the scale. Analog scales have three different types of divisions, namely the primary divisions, which are shown here corresponding to the numbers. These are known as the primary divisions. Next one is the secondary divisions, which are exactly halfway in between the primary divisions. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 secondary divisions are there. And the subdivisions are the divisions which are there in between the secondary division and the primary division. So in between the primary division and the secondary division, there are four subdivisions on this scale. When reading an analog scale, the primary, secondary and subdivision readings are added to determine the voltage, current or resistance reading. 
When the reading is obtained from the scale, it should be multiplied by the multiplier corresponding to the range switch. Now let us see some of the problems associated with the analog multimeters. The first problem that is associated with the analog multimeters is the selection of the wrong function or the wrong scale using the function switch. For example, when the meter is set to ohmic scale or the resistance scale, and when you are attempting to take a voltage reading, these meters have been known to explode. Thus, user has to ensure the correct settings of the functions and the corresponding range. The second problem that is associated with the analog multimeter is the parallax error. These errors occur when user is reading the pointer against the selected scale on the analog multimeter. For example, if you read the scale from the side angle view, a measured value of 120 volts may appear as 123 volts that is slightly higher or 117 volts that is slightly lesser according to which side the user is looking at the pointer. The 120 volt reading only occurs when you are looking straight on the pointer suspended over the scale. Analog multimeters also require some computations. Thus, users should have great mathematical skills. Else, it is time consuming to consider primary divisions, secondary divisions and subdivisions to compute the final measurement. This is the block diagram of analog multimeter. We will be studying the functions of each of these blocks in the next slide using the circuit diagrams. Analog multimeter is a multifunctional instrument that can measure AC and DC voltages, currents, values of the resistance, etc. This figure shows the internal circuitry of analog multimeter. It consists of input checks across which the component or the part of the circuit under test is connected. Analog multimeter consists of rotary switches, PMMC galvanometer and resistive networks of series and shunt resistors. Rotary switches are used to select the required function for the particular measurement to be done. For example, the resistance measurement, current measurement or the voltage measurement. Switchable breach rectifier is used to allow the multimeter to measure the AC signals. Also, attenuators can be used to lower the magnitude of the signal to protect the PMMC instrument. Various ranges of voltages can be measured by selecting the appropriate series resistor using the rotary switch. Similarly, various ranges of currents up to the specified range can be measured by selecting the appropriate shunt resistors using the rotary switches. The internal battery source and the resistive network is provided to measure the resistances. Accuracy of the analog multimeters is very low due to parallax errors. Also, the accuracy of the wide range analog multimeters is lower than the individual meters such as ammeters and voltmeters over a single measuring range. One major limitation of using an analog multimeter for AC voltage measurement is that the maximum frequency which can be measured directly is very low. It is only 100 Hz in case of moving iron instrument and it is 2 kHz in case of dynamometer voltmeter. The partial solution to this limitation is to first rectify the voltage signal that is to be measured and then apply it to the moving coil meter. This extends the upper measurable frequency up to 20 kHz. However, addition of these rectifier makes the measuring system very sensitive to the environmental temperature changes and the non-linearities significantly affect measurement accuracy for voltages that are very small relative to full-scale value. The working of the analog multimeter is based on the principle of PMMC instrument. When the current flows through this moving coil, the coil moves in the magnetic field. Due to this flow of current, there is a deflecting torque which is produced. Due to this deflecting torque, the coil rotates at some angle. Thus, the pointer which is attached to this coil also moves over a graduated scale. Thus, the measured value is indicated on the scale by the pointer. A pair of helical springs are attached to the moving spindle to provide the controlling torque. The controlling torque acts in the opposite direction to that of deflecting torque. Thus, making this pointer steady over a particular reading. Now, let us see the advantages of analog multimeter. 
A sudden change in the signal can be detected by the analog multimeter more swiftly than the digital multimeter. All measurements are possible by using a single meter. Increase or the decrease in the signal levels can be observed more carefully in the analog multimeter. Now, disadvantages of analog multimeter are Analog multimeters are bulky in size. Pointer movement is very slow, thus cannot be used to measure voltages with frequencies higher than the 50 Hz. They are very inaccurate due to the effect of the Earth's magnetic field and they are vulnerable to shock and vibrations. Let us learn about digital multimeters. Digital multimeter is a device which has two words in its name, digital and multimeter. The word digital indicates that the meter has liquid crystal display or LCD display or any other form of digital display. The word multimeter indicates that the single instrument can be used for measuring multiple parameters. Digital multimeters are also known as voltmeter or VOM meter. Thus, digital multimeter is a multifunctional meter that measures and displays multiple parameters on an LCD screen. Difference between the digital multimeter and the analog multimeter is the ability of the digital multimeter to display the measured electrical values quickly without any computations. There are two types of digital multimeters. The first one is known as scalable digital multimeter and the second one is known as auto-ranging digital multimeters. When working with the scalable digital multimeters, users need to have an idea of the value of the voltage, current or the resistance that is being measured. User has to manually set the required range on the meter. Failure to observe these values will result in inaccurate readings and possible damage to the meter. In the case of auto-ranging digital multimeters, these are the most widely used multimeters since they are very easy to use. They have very high functionality and quickly displays the readings. This type of multimeters requires user to choose only the electrical quantity such as voltage, resistance or current that is required to be measured but range is automatically set. Now, let us learn about the internal circuitry of digital multimeter using the block diagram. This figure shows the block diagram of digital multimeter with all the functional blocks in its internal circuitry. This block diagram consists of the input probes which are used to do the measurements, the rotary switch which is used to select the function of the multimeter, the constant current source which is required for the measurement of the resistance, buffer amplifier which is used to amplify the signal, the calibrated attenuator which is used to lower the amplitude of the voltage signal so as to protect the instrument from any damage, the rectifier circuit to convert the AC signal to the pulsating DC signal, the analog to digital converter, the current to voltage converter and finally the digital display. Now, let us see how the digital multimeter functions for any resistance measurement. When an unknown resistance is connected across the input probes and when the rotary switch is connected to position 1, a proportional current flows through the resistor which is connected across the input probes from the constant current source. Voltage across the resistance is directly proportional to the resistance value that is connected across these input probes. This voltage is then amplified using the buffer amplifier and then fed to the A to D converter to get the reading on the digital display in ohms. Similarly, we can do AC voltage measurement. When the rotary switch is connected in position 2, multimeter can be used to measure the AC voltage. AC voltage applied across the input probes is first attenuated and attenuator is used to lower the amplitude of the voltage signal to a known value so as to protect the measuring device from any damage due to high signal levels. The attenuated signal is then rectified to convert it into a proportional pulsating voltage which is then fed to A to D converter to display the magnitude of this voltage in volts. When the rotary switch is in position 3, 
the multimeter will measure ac current ac current which is fed through these input probes is converted into a proportional voltage by using current to voltage converter this resulting voltage is then rectified by using a rectifier circuit now the voltage which is in terms of ac current is fed to analog to digital converter to get a reading on the digital display in amperes Similarly when the rotary switch is in position 4 the multimeter measures dc current this dc current which is fed through these input probes is converted into a proportional voltage by current to voltage converter now the voltage which is in terms of dc current is fed to the analog to digital converter to get the required magnitude of the ac current on the digital display this reading will be in amperes when the rotary switch is in position 5 the multimeter will measure the unknown value of the dc voltage the dc voltage that is fed through the input probes is attenuated using the calibrated attenuator and the resulting attenuated signal is directly fed to analog to digital converter this converter will give the reading in the digital form that will be displayed on the lcd screen this reading will be in volts important parts of digital multimeter are the digital display the meter dial the panel indicator which is indicating various functions and their corresponding ranges and the ports or the probe connections digital multimeter consists of an lcd display screen this screen is illuminated for better visualization this screen can display five digits the leftmost digit on the screen represents the sign value and other four digits represents the number we know that the multimeter can perform many tasks such as measuring of voltages measuring of current or measuring of resistance hence the selection knob or the meter dial is used to select the required function and the corresponding range also there are three ports on the front panel of the digital multimeter the first port is known as milliampere volt ohm port which allows the measurement of three quantities they are first one the current up to 200 mA voltage and the resistance the second port is known as 10 ampere port which is used to measure large currents in the circuit the red color proof is plugged either in mA ampere volt ohm port or 10 ampere port depending upon the application the last type of port is known as common port or com port common port is normally connected to the negative terminal of the circuit or the component the black color probe is connected to the common port let us learn about the features of digital multimeter digital multimeter has a feature of automatic range adjustment which enables the multimeter to change the internal range according to the circuit requirements it also has the ability to stop the meter at a particular range and prevent the overloading if the meter is used for doing voltage measurements The second important feature of digital multimeter is its backlit LCD that is it has illuminated display for better visualization this also helps in dark situations when there is no other light source to observe the reading on the multimeter display digital multimeter has a very useful feature of auto off that is multimeter turns off automatically when it is not in use This feature prevents the drainage of the battery voltage if the user forgets to turn it off. Digital multimeter are also facilitated with the probes which are very easy to work with and these probes are very easy to replace if they get damaged. Finally, digital multimeter automatically shows the polarity of the current or the voltage being measured. That is when the voltage or the current being measured has the same polarity as that of the meter connections meter will show positive reading and when the voltage or the current being measured has the opposite polarity as that of the meter connections meter will show the negative reading such facility was not available in the analog multimeter but meter deflects backward and reverses back to take the reading accurately today i'm going to show you how to use a multimeter for those who don't know what a multimeter is well Multimeter is something you use to measure electrical values such as voltage, current, and resistance in electronic devices you'll find in your car or in your house. This video is geared specifically to beginners. 
So I'm going to cover all the basic functions of a multimeter and also help you answer the question, what is a good multimeter and where can you buy one? The good thing about multimeters is that they are very inexpensive, yet they can give you an incredible amount of information once you learn how to use them. Before we start learning how to use a multimeter, let's have a look at some of the basics of electricity. Electricity can be defined as a flow of electrons. If the electrons are not moving, we call it static electricity. If the electrons are moving on a conductive material, then we call it electric current. When it comes to multimeters, we only talk about electric current. There are two types of electric current, DC current and AC current. DC means direct current, means the direction of the current always flows in one direction. For example, any device that runs off of a battery is run by DC current. Next up we have the AC current. AC means alternative current, where the direction of the current always change. For example, the current coming through your wall outlet is AC current, so as most of the appliances you connect to it. Now let's have a look at multimeters. There are two types of multimeters, manual range multimeters and auto range multimeters. Whatever multimeter you buy, they always come with at least two leads. One is red and one is black. The black lead always goes to the common jack where it says common. The red lead goes to either of these two jacks depending on what you're measuring. If you're measuring volts, resistance or milliamps, then you want to plug the red lead into this jack. If you are measuring larger currents up to 10 amps, then the red lead goes here. Different multimeters may have a different setup for the red jack. For example, in this multimeter, if you are testing volts, resistance or diodes, then the red lead goes here. If you are testing smaller currents in milliamps or microamps, then the red lead goes here. For larger currents up to 10 amps, then the red lead goes here. First, we will take a look at a very cheap manual range multimeter. We are going to be looking at DC voltage. AC voltage, amps, resistance, and continuity. Let's start with DC voltage. I'm gonna test this car battery to see if it's good. So you need to have the red lead in this jack where it says volt. Because the car batteries are in 12 volts range, you wanna turn the dial into the next number up from 12. So in this multimeter, 20 is the closest number up from 12. Then you wanna connect the red lead to the positive terminal and the black lead to the negative terminal. We have 12.9 volts here, and that is a good reading. If the reading was very low, then you definitely have a weak battery, and you want to replace it. Let's say you connect the leads backwards. It's not going to do any damage, but the reading on the multimeter will be negative, letting you know that the current is flowing the other direction. That way you can identify the polarity, which is handy. Let's say you don't know the amount of voltage you want to measure. Well, then you always want to start from the highest number available in your multimeter, and work your way down until you get an accurate reading. When I say an accurate reading, a reading with two decimals is accurate enough for most cases. If you get a reading of 1, that means the voltage you're going to measure is beyond the selected range of your multimeter, so you want to scale up until you get two decimal places. Let's move on to AC voltage. Let's see if this wall outlet is working. Now you're going to turn the dial into AC volts, and we have two readings. One is 200 volts, and one is 750 volts. Now if you turn the dial into 200 volts, then the multimeter will only read up to 200. That is good if you live in a country where household voltage is in 115 range. But in Australia, wall outlets have 240 volts, so I'm gonna turn the dial into 750, cause that is the next one up we have on this multimeter. You wanna be careful when you're doing this. You don't wanna touch these metal tips of the probes. And also you wanna make sure your test leads are not damaged or having any exposed wires. Cause you're dealing with high voltage and you don't wanna get electrocuted. Then you want to probe into the outlet, and we have 240 volts. Let's move on to measuring resistance. This is very easy. All you have to do is to turn the dial into resistance. This horseshoe mark right here is the standard symbol for the resistance. And if you look down here, the red list stays in the same place because this jack can read resistance as well. Resistance means how hard it is for the current to flow through in a circuit. So let's say you measure the resistance of something while it is still connected to a power source or still connected to a circuit board, then the multimeter will take a different path with the least resistance between the test leads and will give you a false reading. So whenever you test resistance, you always want to isolate the subject you're trying to work on. Here I'm measuring the resistance of a blower motor. Here I'm measuring the resistance of a fuel injector. Now here's a practical example. Let's say one of the fuel injectors in your car went out. A brand new one is often very expensive. 
So let's say you're thinking about buying a used one from a junkyard. Then the only way you can figure out whether this is a good one or a bad one is to check the resistance and see if the reading meets the manufacturer's specs. If the reading is different than what is mentioned in the specs, that means you're looking at a bad injector so you can look for another one. Next up we have the continuity. You can use this function to see if you have continuity between two points. If you have continuity, then the multimeter will beep. This cheap multimeter does not have a beep function. So let's move on to this one. Now you can turn the dial into this symbol that looks like a speaker. That is continuity. And the red list still stays in the same place where it says resistance. Let's see if this piece of wire is broken. We hear the beep, so this wire is good. Here I'm testing the fuses in my car to see if I have burned fuse. Here I'm testing an earphone. Finally, let's move on to measuring current. If you are measuring milliamps, then the red lead stays in here. If you are measuring larger currents up to 10 amps, then the red lead goes here. If you are not sure about how much current you're gonna measure, then always start from the amps instead of milliamps. That way you wouldn't damage your multimeter. And if the reading is actually in very low amps, then you can move on to milliamps for more accuracy. Now, unlike measuring volts, resistance or continuity where we place the test leads in parallel to the flow, now we have to splice in the test leads in series with the flow. Here's an example of a fan connected to a battery. Here we have the negative side and here we have the positive side. To measure amps, here we have the multimeter spliced into the power side wire and as you can see, we have a reading of 5.5 amps. Now let me show you something real quick. As you can see, when the motor first started to spin, it draws a lot of current. Now it is normal to draw a little more current in the beginning, but too much current means the motor is very hard to spin, which is a classic sign for a sticky bearing. And this could be the reason why your car's fuse for the blow motor keeps blowing once in a while. Alright, now that's how you properly use a multimeter for basic functions. Advantages of digital multimeter are they have a very high input impedance, hence there is negligible loading effect, they have a very high accuracy, they are smaller in size, therefore they are very easy to carry, that is they are portable. Digital display is very easy to read and some of the multimeters have feature of automatic range adjustment that is range is adjusted automatically and no manual adjustments are required. Disadvantages of digital multimeter are they need a battery for their operation, their internal circuitry is very complex and they are very costly as compared to the analog multimeter. Now let us see the applications of digital multimeter. Digital multimeters are generally used to measure the current, voltage or the resistance. Apart from these, digital multimeters are also used to perform special functions like checking of diode, capacitance measurement, measuring of HFE or DC current gain of transistors, measurement of frequency and testing of continuity. Let us learn about various applications of digital multimeter in detail. The first application is the current measurement by using a digital multimeter. When the digital multimeter is used to measure the current, it acts like a ammeter. Generally, there are two ports provided for the measurement of the current. The first port is known as 10 ampere port, which is designated for the large current measurements. And the second port is known as milli ampere port, which is designated for the small current measurements. We know that to measure the current in the circuit, ammeter or the multimeter should be connected in series with that circuit. Thus, precaution should be taken while working with this circuit. To test the current using the digital multimeter, first plug the probes into appropriate ports. That is, red probe should be connected either to milli ampere port for smaller current measurements or it should be connected to 10 ampere port for large current measurements. Black probe should always be connected to common port or COM port. Next, you have to set the dial either to AC or DC current depending upon the type of the current being measured. Also, the direction of current should be such that the current enters from the red probe and should leave the multimeter from the black probe. This is shown in this figure. The current enters through the red probe and it leaves the multimeter through the black probe. Next, you have to turn off the power supply of the circuit through which the current has to be measured. Now, open the circuit and connect the meter along the path through which the current has to be measured. That is, connect the multimeter in series with the circuit through which the current has to be measured. 
If we switch on the power supply, then the meter will read the current flowing through the circuit. This reading will be displayed on the LCD screen. Note, for the current measurements above 1 ampere, clamp meter is used and for the current less than 1 ampere, digital multimeters are used. Second application of digital multimeter is to measure the voltages which are AC or DC in nature. Let us see how voltage can be measured using digital voltmeter. When the multimeter is set to measure the voltages, it acts like a voltmeter. To measure the voltage using digital voltmeter, first check whether the application being tested utilizes AC or DC voltage. Then you have to adjust the meter dial to the suitable function that is either to DC voltage or to the AC voltage. Also, adjust the range to the slightly higher value than what is the expected value or the predicted value. If the value being measured is unknown, then set the range to the highest range position. Insert the red probe into V terminal or V port and insert the black probe into common terminal or common port. Connect the test slates across the component or the part of the circuit across which the voltage has to be measured. That is, multimeter should be connected in parallel with that component or that part of the circuit across which the voltage has to be measured. Reading or the value of the voltage will be displayed on this LCD screen. While measuring AC voltages, variations may happen in the reading. But as the test continues, the reading will become steady. Testing of voltages is carried out to ensure effectiveness of an electrical system. That is, loads such as lights or motors are designed to operate on a nominal voltage. But in the case of over voltage, that is when the voltage exceeds the nominal value, equipment may get damaged. Also, when the voltage is less than the nominal value, load will not turn on. Hence, the multimeter can be used to ensure that the voltage reading is within the specification. Coming to the next application of digital multimeter, now let us see how resistance can be measured using digital multimeter. In this case, we configure the multimeter to act like a ohm meter. To test the resistance with the digital multimeter, firstly, you have to turn off the power supply connected to the component or the circuit that is being tested. Then, plug the probes into the suitable ports. That is, you have to connect red probe into V port and connect the black probe into the common port. Now, adjust the dial or the selector switch to point towards the resistance mode. Also, select the expected or the predicted range on the dial. If you do not know what is the expected value of the resistance being measured, then keep the dial at the highest range position and gradually decrease the range till significant value is displayed on the screen. Connect the test leads of the component whose value has to be measured and the value should be displayed on the screen. Please note, it is important to have good contact between the test leads and the circuit or the component under test. Dirt, bodily contact and poor test lead connection can considerably alter the readings. The next application of digital multimeter is to check the diode for its proper functioning. To check the diodes, Firstly, adjust the dial or the selector switch to point towards the diode check function. This is given as the diode symbol on the front panel of the multimeter. Then, plug the probes into suitable ports. That is, you have to insert the red probe in V port and insert the black probe into common port. If the red lead of the multimeter is connected to the positive terminal of the diode and the black lead of the multimeter is connected to the negative terminal of the diode, then we should get a lower reading on the multimeter screen. On the other hand, if we do the reverse way, that is if we connect red lead to the negative terminal of the diode and the black lead of the multimeter probe to the positive terminal of the diode, then we should get a very high value. Only when the readings obtained are as explained in the step 3, then only we can say diode is working properly. The last application of digital multimeter which is explained in this video is continuity test. Continuity test is used to know whether there exists any low resistance path via two points that is to check whether the points are shorted or not. To test the continuity using digital multimeter, firstly we have to adjust the dial or the selector switch to point towards the continuity function. 
This function is represented as the speaker symbol on the front panel of the multimeter. Now plug the probes into suitable ports. That is, you have to insert the red probe into V port and black probe into common port. Now touch the leads of the probes to the terminals of the component or the circuit under test. If the digital multimeter beeps, that is it produces sound, then the terminals are shorted and the circuit is closed. If the digital multimeter does not beep, that means there is no continuity. The resistance testing and the continuity testing are a good way to check the short circuits and the ground fault which causes circuit breakers to trip, fuses to blow and possible injuries are caused to the workers on the field. This presentation is entirely based on the information provided in the textbook A Course in Electrical and Electronic Instruments and Instrumentation by A.K. Shawnee and a tutorial on electronic measuring instruments given on website www.tutorialspoint.com. For any further details or queries, kindly contact me via email ID or WhatsApp. Thank you.